you see there is a mandate that is upon our life every one of us here every one of us here seated here and everyone listening as long as you're hearing me there is a mandate that is upon your life and that one primary mandate is to preach the gospel we are not saying that the moment you are saved you should rush and go and preach the gospel no 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 that's what you're saying the moment you are saved understand that you are meant to save many god is not bringing this teaching on idol worship into you as a coincidence it is meant deliberately for you to understand it and it's not just for you to consume it it's for you to act on it you might say oh there's nobody that worship idol around me yes but your social media you need to preach it for someone to now if we had not started teaching on this idol worship and how to destroy them how will some people be free there are many people that contact me and say that oh this has been taking life in our family and we say okay do this do this do this this will end it hello good evening brother hello good evening how are you doing i'm very fine and you? yeah you know we just finished our service for today so what's your name my name is Chikeze Emmanuel. Mr. Chikeze Emmanuel. Um, that is what's about idol worshipping today, right? So can you just tell us outside, the people watching you outside there, what you know and what you understand and what you want them to know about idol worshipping? All right. It was a mind-blowing session. And one of the things that I was able to get was that there are things that we've heard but there is a reality of who you are as a Christian and as who you are as a Christian there are things that should not actually um, trigger you there are things that should not actually move you because when you know certain things there is a level which you are meant to operate in um, what I have to say about idol worshipping is that when you are a Christian you don't have any connection or any business with idol worshipping you can maybe you, you have been doing that but God has delivered you from it. So you don't need to go back to the idol worship because it's hindering God's purpose for your life. So you don't need to do that at all. When God, God has saved you fully, so you need to turn to God fully and serve God with everything you have. So what do you have to tell people worshipping idols outside there? Eh? Alright, first is that um, about idol worshipping, there's actually a lot. And if you are yet to arise as an emissary to put down the theory that to put down um, the the things going around about idol worship to teach people and tell people about the wrongs of idol worship and i think you are doing wrong there is need to arise now and speak against it wherever you are knowing who you are in christ what i want to tell the audience is that there's no power in idol worshiping jesus christ is the truth and the only way so people should avoid and leave people that are doing those things like God, I do worshiping and come back to Jesus Christ. Anytime an attack comes to you and it does not have effect on you, it returns back to who send it. That's the principle. That's the law. So anyone that is willing to stand to kill you is also willing to die. Hope you know. The demonic word. If they invoke a spirit to go, if the spirit go and does and he was not able to fulfill that which he was sent to fulfill, the demon have to return back to the. He must take that blood. Except they will not send it to another place. The Bible, even Jesus Christ said, he said, my word will not return to me unfulfilled. That is also how the kingdom of darkness works. When they make an enchantment, if it does not get them, it comes back to you. If it does not go to where they sent it, it will come back to you. When we say back to sender, it's when it has already gotten you. Then we are not taking it from you to return it back. But by nature, it has no power to get you. If you are living in Christ.